Guys, good to have you back. Let's focus on optical isomerism. This is going to be a complete video on optical isomerism. In this video here, I'm going to explain what optical isomerism is really all about so that you can understand and molecule that is with optical isomerism. Then I want to uh, introduce the concept of what inertia mass and diastereal mass. So many students in chemistry do not understand what the difference between inertia mass and diastereal mass. In this video here, I will what. But, uh, go down in details to explain what's called inertia mass and diastereal mass, so you will understand. Then we are going to look at what the hour and air substitution. This is one of the most confusing concepts when it comes to what optical is amazing. Now, how do you assign hour and air configuration to inertia mass and diastereal mass? So, this is a story I want to look at in this video. So, it's going to be step by step method, it's going to be a lengthy video because I want to actually use this video here to explain all the details you are supposed to know. Now, let me promise you here. By the end of this video, you don't need to watch any other video in Optical is Amazing, or you don't need to watch read your textbook again in Optical is Amazing. Now, what you want to do here is so what after this video here, after this lengthy video, what you want to do is so what go to your past questions or go to some questions and start answering those questions. So that points are what makes you so you really want to stick to the end of the video, take this thing step by step and understand it. Now, if you have any questions, only leave at the comment section. I will respond to that. If this video is here, only give you what you like to get a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you want to subscribe. So let's get into it. What is optical ice magazine? You want to ask? Take that. Optical ice magazine is a type of steel ice magazine in which two molecules have the same chemical formula and the same connectivity, but differs in the arrangement of the atoms in space. This difference in spatial arrangement causes the molecules to have different physical, physical properties, such as their ability to retain the plane polarized light. So, in the sense that, uh, optical isomerism is the type of isomerism whereby two or more molecules have the same molecular formula, the same, the same molecular formula and the same structure, but differs. In the in their what connectivity and this different different in their connectivity in space causes them to have a different uh physical properties and these physical properties when it comes to optical is amazing is what the plane polarized light do you get that so now there's something here sterile ice amazing let me just break it down but now when it comes to what sterile sterile ice amazing sterile ice amazing is divided into two points here we have geometrical isomerism. Geometrical what? Isomerism. And here we have, here we have what? Optical, optical what? Isomerism. Okay. Now, this geometrical isomerism is divided into two parts. Which is what? The C slash trans. And here, here we have what? The E slash and Z. This is that. Then this optical is amazing is what is the inertial mass, inertial mass, and what die steel mass, steel, steel mass. Now I have done a complete video on geometrical what is amazing. This geometrical is amazing or called what in double bond of the word of the arc. Where there's what integrals of rotation about the kappa kappa. Double bond, do you get that? There's injuries of what restriction. So, this geometric is amazing is due to what restriction of what or, or restriction of rotation in the what double bond. So, and we have the C and trans, our E and Z. You always see question on the E and Z. How do you assign E and Z configuration? So, I've done a complete set of video on this one here. So, you should need to watch check out that video. So, our main focus here is going to be this optical experiment which, which we have started. I wish I wanted to differentiate between inertial mass and diastereal mass and what what is called E and Z, uh, sorry, S, O and S configuration. This is that. So check out this video if you want to finish this video here yeah, so you understand everything about this for you because you really want to see, you, you have to see question on this. You want to ask yourself, what are the organic molecules that what possess optical isomerism or that exhibit optical isomerism? Now, Molecule that is with optical is amazing are called Kara molecule. Are called Kara what molecule? Kara what molecules? 
center. They have four different groups. I get so any molecule that have a carbon with four different it's called carawatt molecule. Do that. So if for example here we have a carbon carrying four different group. Do that. So this one is called a, now this molecule is called carawatt molecule, and this carbon atom of carry four different is called Asymmetry center. Asymmetry what center? Do that. Asymmetry what center? So a car, a car molecule. Like we have what the car what center? Which we have also called car, car what center. So these are stuff you want to understand. Yes, yes, that. So all car molecule like possess or exhibit what optical what asymmetry. And this these molecules or compounds go to the plane of polarized light. So in the sense that when you pass light into it here, it's going to rotate either to the left or to the right. To the left or over to the right. So now look at something here. Asymmetry what center or the car what center. All that you want to put in mind is that every car every uh, car molecule must have what numbers of what stay what isomers. So, how do you know numbers of sterile isomers in which a carbon molecule will possess? Now, the numbers of sterile isomers in which a carbon molecule will possess uh, depend on what numbers of carbon what center. So, when a molecule is being given to you and they ask you how many possible sterile isomers are you going to get there, the first one to do is to what, uh, locate what a, the word carbon what center. So, I'm going to drop some example. Let's locate the car center. And let's get the word numbers of what table what isomers. For example, now let's look at the word the one at the board. Here we have four amino, four sine three nitro eptin. Now, now a question will be given to you in the exam. How many car center do we have here? And how many stable isomers can we get from here? It's very easy here. I've done a complete video on how to what, identify numbers of car center and uh, numbers of car center and to calculate what stable what. Numbers of sterile isomers, and I've and I've also done video on on that word draw enantiomers. Do that. So uh, the link will be in the description below, or you see it by the end of this video. So you should also check out that video too. So now the first one to do here, when you have compound like this, now you want to detect the numbers of what Kara center. From now from that numbers of Kara center, that will determine the numbers of sterile what isomers. So when something like this gives you four amino First sign of 3 nitro eptin. So you felt the first you want to do is to what draw the structure, draw the word structure of eptin. Eptin means how many carbon Seven carbon So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you see that? So I can know it like one, two, three, four, five, six, out seven. So carbon number four is our what amino group, which we call a is to do that. This called amino group. You also have a called sino group. C N. This is that. Then come back three up nine two group. So can that be up or what down? So let me put it here. So the next one to do is to what give them what I division. This is that. So you have I division, 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 I division. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. This is that. So, how many stable isomers do we have here? Look at something here. Now, remember, a car molecule, a car molecule, have what a car center, and a car center is not what a much what center. Just that. So, yeah, this cannot be a car center because it's having what three hydrogen. So, this one is at cannot be a car center. Likewise, so this one cannot be a car what center because that will be two hydrogen. Remember to that a car molecule have a car center and that car center have what uh, four different groups. So but when you look at this one here, this one is a car molecule because that was NO2, you have what hydrogen, and, and, and is that we don't know this one, this one here. So here I have what two car what center. So if you want to call this one here, can we can do it as CH3. CH2. So C 
CH3, CH2, this is that. Then you have carbon here, hydrogen, you have carbon, uh, NO2, this is that, NO2, NO2. Then you have CNH2, and you have what? CN. This is that. So you have, again, you have CH2, CH2, CH3. Like, so this is what it is called molecule here. So how many possible stable isomers do we have here? Here we have one, two, two car center. Now, to calculate the numbers of possible stable isomers, you need a simple formula, which is what? Numbers of stable isomers, numbers of stable isomers. Because what? Uh, two raised by what? N. Now, what does the N mean? N means because you got numbers of car centers. So here we have N, because of numbers of what? Car center. Right there, numbers of car center here. So if you look at this structure here, this is our two car center. So maybe n is equals to two. This is our n equals to two. Now, when n is equal to two, what does it mean? It means that numbers of sterile isomers, numbers, numbers of sterile isomers, because of two is about two. I want to about two is about two is equal to what four. It means that this structure has about four possible sterile isomers. This is that. Now, if for example, here yeah, I have uh, B out here, yeah, yeah, I have CH3, yeah, I have uh, CH3, CH2, yeah, I have CL. Look at this guy. So let me look at this one here. This one is about one uh, optical, one uh, Car center, do that. So this carbon atom here is about one car center. So you have one, two, three, four. You have about four different groups attached to you. This is that. So now, how many possible stereo isomers are you going to have? So you have N is equal to what? One. Then numbers of stereo isomers, numbers, numbers of what? Stereo isomers. So it's what? Two is about one. This is that. So it means that it's going to be what two. So when a car molecule only have one car center, it's going to have two possible what stable what isomers. Um, when a car center have what two cars, they're going to have what four possible what stable isomers. So this way I want to explain the concept of what inertial mass and what diastereal mass. So what you want to understand is that all car molecules have their what mirror image. Do you get that? All car molecule have a mirror image. So, if for example, yeah, let me withdraw this one again. Why is this add? Say, so uh, CH3, CH3, CH2, you have CH3, you have RC, you have the R. Like that, yeah. So, now, well, if you place a mirror here, if you place a mirror here, either if you place a mirror at this point here, you have, you have to get what a, a mirror image of this other guy here, which is B R C C H O three. You have what C L. You have C H two. You have C H two. Just that. So a car molecule and its mirror image are what are two different what compounds. Do that. There are two different compounds. Because that they have the same molecular formula, that they have the same chemical formula, and they have the same structure. But what differs in them is that what physical properties in that uh, they have what different orientation. Do that. So if you place a polarimeter here, or if you pass on what you place it in a what in a polarimeter, one will rotate the, the plane polarized light to the what to the right, and one will rotate what the plane polarized light to what to the left. So a car molecule and its mirror image are called a natural mass. Are called what? A natural mass. Right then. 
So a camera mechanism mirror image are two different what compounds. Do that. And the term is to differentiate them or to denote them is called what enantiomers. So what we want to understand is that uh, a carbon record and mirror image are what non superimposable. That is, they cannot place them on top. That they cannot what overlap. Do you get that? So this guy is what is non superimposable. Now when you talk about the word superimposable, what do you understand? Now superimposable means that you cannot place this one on top. You cannot over overlap. Do you get that? So that is why there are two different what molecules here. Uh, a carbon molecule is what mirror image are called a natural mass. Remember, when my N is one, then I have got only one car center. How many possible sterilized mass do we have? Two possible sterilized mass. So this guy or this structure have only got one car center. Unlike this other one here. This is that this one is having got two car center. So that one is having got four possible sterilized mass. But yeah, this one is having got only one car center. Now, because I have only one car center, what does it mean? Well, I have two possible what, stereo, what isomers. And the two possible stereo isomers are called what enantiomers because they are what mirror image of what of each other. So we have called the Fisher projection. If you want to use the Fisher projection to draw this thing here, it's very easy. So let's use Fisher projection to draw this thing here. I've done a complete video on how you can what, use Fisher projection and the perspective formula. To draw a natural mass, so you need to check out that video because that video I explained step by step method on how to do what use the perspective formula and the Fisher projection formula to draw what a natural mass. I want to use that knowledge here in this video. So, we're talking about Fisher, Fisher projection, projection formula. Now, in Fisher projection formula, it's very easy. Here. So you will, you will use vertical and horizontal line. Use what vertical and, and use vertical and what horizontal line. So vertical and, and horizontal line. Now, now this point of intersection indicates what the chi what molecule. Remember, I drew this one for you. B I we have C L we have C H three we have C H three C H two right. Now this one just what must for you. If I want to use my Fisher projection to draw it, it's very easy. I will write vertical and, and horizontal line. Do you guys? Vertical and horizontal line. This point of intersection here means for this color, which is called the car center. So here I can have B R O. Yeah, what C H two C H two. Yeah, what C L. Yeah, what C H what three. This is that. So this one is a Fisher. Fisher projection here. So when you are drawing a natural mass, mainly use what the Fisher projection what formula. So I write some arts. So the next thing you want to do here is to draw the mirror image of what of this guy. Now when you draw the mirror image of this guy, here we have B R U. Here we have C H two C H three. Here we have what C H three. Here we have CL. Can you see that? So this is called Fisher projection formula. Now this point here, we, we only have one intercept here. Do you that? That intercept means that we only have one car center. So what can that be to the right? What can that be to the left? So I want to teach you now as we continue this video, I want to teach you the arrow and S configuration. How do you assign our S configuration? Do you get it? How do you assign our S configuration? Now, if this one, this one is going to be like this. I think I'm going to be what? Like this. Just that. So, I'm going to teach you more on this stuff here. As a matter of fact, this one is the. This one here is the what? Our configuration. Our what? Configuration. This guy is, is the our what? Configuration. Why not? Is what? S. Configuration. How do I get some here? Find out in what? As we move on, we are going to teach you our next configuration, how to assign priority and move what the arrow. So we are, we, are, we are coming to that. Now, let's focus on this one here. Remember, here we have how I many, uh, how many what? How many car center? Here we have two car center because 
Look at something here. The first one I did, it only have more car center, right? So that why we only have what enough mass. So there's no what diastereomer mass here. So you can see that enough mass. These are car molecule and and what non super impossible mirror what in which. Do you understand? Enough mass. These are what these are what car molecules and it non super impossible what mirror what in which. So it's a car molecule and it's what mirror image. That is called enough mass. So let me talk about this one here. Remember I told you that this one will have four possible what sterilized mass. I want to use the Fisher projection formula in drawing the what uh, the inertial mass. Do you get that? So here are what two points of intersection. This is that like, here we have two points of what of intersection. Two points of what of intersection. So this one is going to be the first two here. So I would have CH2, CH3. So when I going to have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, here we have CH2, CH2, and CH2. Look at it very well. This one is this guy, and this one is what is, what, is this guy here. Can you see that? Now, these two points is what is my carrot center. Do you get that? So, I can have something like this. I can do it like this. That. And now, remember this one, one, two, three. I'm starting from one, two, three. One, two, three. This is that. One, two, three, yes. So one, two, three. This one is having what? Uh, N, O, two, and what? And I, Jerusalem. Can you see that? This one is here. So I'm starting with one, two, three. So this one is what is the top one. So if I start with one, two, three. You have one, two, three. So this three here, the common matter is having what? N, O, and what? H. This other one here, four, is having what? N, H, two, and what? C, N. Can you see that? So these are what my two carawatt center. So I can wipe this place out. You will imagine that it's going, to, it's going to have four possible sterilized mass. Four possible sterilized mass. So here are this stuff here. Here are this stuff. And here are this stuff here. So if, if you take a look at it very well, so here is the first what table what isomers we have. Do that. So how do you get the remaining three of them? So remember that what have CH3, CH2, CH3. We have CH2, CH2, or CH3. The same thing you got here. CH2, CH2, or CH3. Just that. So you said that here yeah, also the same thing as CH2. CH what three, right? The same to here. CH two, CH two. Here we have CH two, CH two, CH two. Can you see that? So now, if imagine you place a mirror here, imagine that you place a mirror here. What are you going to get? I want to get NO two. I want NH two. This is that. Here we have I division. Here we have CN. This is that. So you can see that these two are mirror image of what official. That, that is, out of the four stereo, possible stereo mass, I've got what, two of them. So how do we get the remaining two? It's very easy. Now, let's flip this one here. Remember, these two are on the same side. They're on the same side here. So this one is just like a mirror image of, what, of this guy here. Right? So I've got two. Um, I've got what? Two. Can you see that? Now, let's get the other one here. If I should flip this other one here, that is, let's move to the right. Let's move to the Let's move to the left. Let me move, move to the right. I want to add H and what's N O two. Can you see that? The less of the wind is in here. Add N H two and what's C N. Can you see that? So how do I get the last one? If I should what place a mirror here. If I should place a mirror here. I want to add H and I want to add what's N O two. This is that. And I want to add what N H to our CM. So these are the four possible stable isomers. So here we have one, two, and here we have what? Three. Okay, three. Here we have one, two, three, and what? Um, four. Do you understand? So you can see the first one we did only have what? Two stable isomers. The the uh, the car molecule and its mirror image. 
because that here we have four possible stereo isomers. From here now, when a molecule only have one car center, you cannot have what diastereomers, it's only what enosomers. That molecule and this what mirror image. Now, but when a molecule have two or more car center, that's what you are now going to have what we call and diastereomers. So now look at something here. If I ask you here, what are the enosomers? The enosomers are what one and two, then three and what four. Why? Because enosomers, these are stable isomers that are what mirror images of what of each other. So these two are enosomers, because they are mirror image of each other. And these two are what are enosomers because they are what mirror image of what of each other. So you have the enosomers, enosomers. Enosomers are uh, is what one and one and two one and two then then three and what four this is that so one one and two three and four are called what enosomers do that so but if so should ask you one and three Two and three, two and seven and four. Look, look at so they are all what stereoisomers. isomers. So you can see that diastereomers, these are uh, stereo isomers that are not mirror images of what of each other. So in isomers, they are what mirror image of each other. Why this diastereomers? They are not mirror image of what of each other. So one and three, one and four. Two and three, two and what four are called diastereomers. Are called diastereomers. Are called diastereomers. I did. Are called diastereomers. So the difference between enosomers and diastereomers. Enosomers, these are stereoisomers that are mirror image of each other. Diastereomers, these are enosomers that are not mirror image of what of each other. Do you understand? So that's what you want to understand. So that is it. So the next I want to is our S configuration. So let's assign our and S configuration. And the formula I want to use, use is what? Fisher projection. Fisher projection. You get it. So you need to want to follow me closely here. Now, remember, Fisher projection is what is what? Vertical our and horizontal line. We have to start with one with what one car center. So there are a couple of steps you need to what follow when you when to what assign our and S configuration. Do you get so but first of all, what is Fisher projection? Fisher projection is a shortcut to draw molecule you are in three-dimensional what form. Do you get so when you look at objects in three-dimensional form, you find that some objects will projecting out of the plane of the paper towards the viewer, why some were projecting behind the plane of the paper away from what of the viewer? So when we talk about picture projection formula, this vertical and horizontal line represent bond that point towards the viewer. Do that. Why the one that is extend back of the plane of the paper? Uh, and what you want to understand is that we have what call the solid the word ash wedge, and here we have what solid word wedge. Now this solid wedge. When you want to draw molecule what in three-dimensional form, you use what the perspective formula here. I've done a complete video on using perspective formula to draw enosomers. You need to what check out that video because it's only step by step. So now when you see a solid wedge in, in a structure, that solid wedge means or implies that the object is projecting towards the viewer, like it's like it's coming at you, like I'm like um pointing towards the camera now do that like it's projecting towards the viewer do that now this one here means what is extending back i can actually what seats do that now the the uh the vector line represent the bond that extend back why the horizontal line uh, represent the border what extend towards what the viewer that is projecting out of the world plane of paper so when you want to assign our s configuration Using what the Fisher projection of that two things must put in mind. We have what the horizontal bond, which means the object is projecting out of the plane of paper. Um, out the vertical bond, which means the, the what the object is projecting back of the what plane of paper. Because this one 
signify where the arrow will move to. Do you understand? So we will signify where the arrow will want to move to. So look at something here. When you want to write or uh, assign R and S configuration, now what you want to put in your mind is that the group that is having the lowest priority should always be at the words the, the, the vertical bond. If, for example, here they say give draw the R and S configuration for bromo bromo chloro fluoro methane. Do you get? Methane is only have one character, which is hydrogen here, B and C and R and F. This is that. So if they should ask not to what? Remember, it, is that what only one color center, right? That was one color center. So is that what three, diff, four different what groups attached to it? So is what the color center. So it can tell you what the plane of plane polarized what lines. So if I don't now they say draw the arrow and S configuration. Remember when you draw this stuff here. Now, if you are picking something like this, what you want to put your mind is that. Hydrogen, which was the lowest power atom, what is power to use? Do you get Hydrogen, the lowest power atom, should always be at the dead carbon. I did then can I what draw any of this stuff here so I can put how you I can have what uh C L and I can have what F here. This is that we understand. So so you are the one that will draw it the way you want to draw it, but always indicate that. The least priority group should always be at the vertical bond. Do you get Now, do you know the reason why? Because the least, the least priority atom or group should always be at the, at the vertical bond because they want to point away from the viewer. Do you understand? So, when you have something like this, the first thing you want to do here, the first thing you want to do here, therefore, assign what the priority to all the what group. Attached what to the color center. So we look at hydrogen. And the first uh, priority rule you want to understand is that atom with higher atomic number take precedence over atom with lower ones. So instead that when you are comparing, com comparing two atoms together or two elements together, or together, you are comparing them. Now you want to watch, look at what the atomic number. The atomic number of hydrogen is what is one. It's okay. Hydrogen, the atomic number is what is one. It's okay. Fluorine, the atomic number is, is 9. Chlorine, the atomic number is what? Is 17. And um, bromine, the atomic number is what? Is what? 30, what? 5. So, atom with higher atomic number take precedence over atoms with what? Over atoms with what? Long. So, now, the first you want to do when you are what? Assigning R and S configuration. Therefore, rank those atoms in order of what priority. So this one going to be, going to be what my number one because is that what the highest priority? Do you get that? Is that what the highest priority is 35? Now you're going to be, going to be my number two because is that what 17? Now you're going to be what my number three because is that what nine? Do you get that? Why are you going to be what my last one? Do you understand? So the first thing you want to do when writing, when assigning our S configuration, therefore, run the atoms. Bonded or bonded to the to the, to the uh, asymmetric center or color center or color carbon in order of, of their power team. So here we have one, two, three, four. Do you get that? I have done a complete video where I explain the E, where I explain the power team step by step. We have about five of them. Do you get that? I, I won't be going that in this video here because I've done a complete video on that. I will, I will recommend to watch, check, check out that video. Do you get that? I will leave the link in the description below. Or use our pink at the word comment section. It's very important to check out that video here. So here we have one, two, three, four. You got remember when you are being given something, when you are being given a structure, say draw the hour and s configuration. What you want to put first in your mind is that the H or the lowest power atom should always be at the word vertical bond. Remember, this special projection here is having the horizontal. The horizontal means that it's pointing towards you. You got Towards what the viewer, the, why the word the vertical board means what is extending back. Do that. So what you want to put in your mind is that when using Fisher projection formula, the lowest power atom should always be at the vertical bond. Just that should always be at, at the vertical bond. So I, we have we have placed hydrogen at the vertical bond now. So without issues. 
So the next you want to do, because you are going to here, you are now going to draw an arrow, starting from what highest priority atom to the second highest priority atom, down to what to the highest priority atom. Do you get that? It means that this one is my highest. I will draw an arrow. Do you get that? Yeah, I will draw the arrow here and draw it back. Do you get that? So there are two ways in which the arrow can go. There are two ways. The arrow can either move to the right or it can move to the left. If you look at the arrow here, the arrow have moved from here to here. It have moved move clockwise. Clockwise means what? Uh, the clockwise means what? The right. Do you get that? So now, when the clockwise, when the arrow move from to the right, do you get to the right? That configuration is known as arrow configuration. Do you get that? Was arrow configuration. Provided, look at something, there's a condition here. Provided hydrogen is on the dead carbon, that is the lowest priority is on what is on the over dead carbon. Look at something, if I should draw my enantiomers here, so here I have this one here B arrow, you have fluorine, you have H. You have C L. This is that. Now you're going to be what number one. You're going to be what number two. You're going to be what number three. You're going to be what number what four. You're going to be what number what four. So now that you're just you going to start here, there from here down. So inside the arrow will always move forward from the highest power atom to the second highest power atom down to the what highest power atom. Now, when I start from here first to second down to the first again, the arrow move to the right, which will arrow what configuration. Now, but when I now when I draw the word, the remember if I should place a mirror here, right? This is a mirror here. Now, when I draw it from here, it now move to what to the left. So here I what X. Just um, so this one is only having what one what stable what isomers. You get that? So these are these are out of what to draw it. Now, what about if the hydrogen? What about if I will give you something like this? What about if I give you something like this? You have hydrogen. You have uh, B R. You have C L. You have what? Fluorine. Now, what about if you have something like this? Now, when the hydrogen is not at the vertical carbon, rather it's what is on the horizontal one. So at this way, it normally used to be to be confused. I don't want to be confused. I want to, to pay people attention here. Now, remember, here's what my number one, here's what my number two, here's what my number three, and here's what my number four. Do you have? Now, what happened? So here we have one, two, three, four. So what happened when hydrogen is on the horizontal? What happened when what is on the horizontal? Remember, if hydrogen is on the horizontal, normally they are not the same. The hydrogen is what is what is on the vertical. Here's what is on the what horizontal, right? So when hydrogen now the idea is that hydrogen should be on the horizontal or the on the vertical bond. So when you move it here, that 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 side move to correspond to the what to the final answer. But on the other hand, now here are from here to here. Now, what, what will that be the configuration? Now, in the right sense, here I move to is what is the right, right? That's also be our configuration. But in reality, because hydrogen is on the horizontal bond, it's not correct again. Now we have what X configuration. This is that. Oh, so I want to end this video here. Uh, in my next video here, I want to dwell on our and S configuration. So. If you don't understand this one here, then you know what to subscribe to the channel because I don't want this video to be too too lengthy. You get too too lengthy. So in the next video, I want to explain the our S configuration step by step. You get then I want to talk about when you have what two carat center, two carat center, like the one you are going to see on display on the, on the screen here. Like when you have something like this, when 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 they give cost a comma like this to join the our S configuration. Or give the configuration or join the structure or something like this. So that's what I want to talk about in what in my next video. I believe this, this video is helpful. This video is helpful. Always give it a like and comment at the comment section that this video is helpful and you get lots from this video. It goes a long way to tell me that what I'm doing here is actually what's helping you guys 
over there. It's very, it goes a long way. Always watch out, give a like, and subscribe to the channel.